Eric's working with um, our Tennessee walking horse, uh, Jose's Magnificent Merlin. And he has a thing about racing in and out of his stall, okay? And I say he can't, comes on this kind of honest when he was, oh, I don't know, about a year and a half old or something like that. He banged his knee on like the edge of the door like that and the door went and ever since then he thinks there's like a ghost or a spook by the by the door and um, so Eric's trying to work him through that and just like you know you know go in there leisurely slow and come out slow and um, this is the kind of stuff that I love that saying when you take the time it takes it takes less time and uh, so y when you find a, a problem or a, a little sticking point with your horse work on that don't just I mean he could just get him in there and he could race in and you know Eric's capable of handling a horse and not getting hurt or anything but it's better to work them through it you know it's like you working through your own fears like if you have certain fears or something so what he's doing is he's just trying to get him to take one step at a time see just one there you go now see how he's Kind of, he kind of, he kind of went. No, nope, I'm going in. See, he was trying to stop him, like by bumping him with the halter, <clears throat> but he didn't. Uh, he just went through it, and that's kind of like a little, little running off kind of thing. It's letting us know that he wasn't, he's not okay with, you know, with going in slow, and and at, at one point he was. He's like, all right, I can do this one step, and but when I get to a certain point, I'm scooting in. And uh, so, I think this is the, only the second time he's done this with him. Maybe. And he does little stuff, but he's doing it kind of like as a lesson. See, so he's, he's like, he's trying to get him to go off his feel, you know? And see how his body language is just telling him, take it easy. See in that, see how he's flicking his, the rope there. That's, you know, come on, so he, he, he started it on his, on his own thigh and then he touched him a little bit. Now he's, he's blocking him from going into his space. And see that tail flishing? That is, that's a little like a sign of protesting or just a little bit of anxiety because I don't see any I'm looking around I don't see any flies so that's a little little anxiety kind of thing Just let you know that he's this is harder for him than you, you might think there And who knows what's going on in his mind? I still think he thinks there's a something gonna jump out at him out of the corner there. It's one of those things. I, I love telling the story. Like, like um, there's things I call them like superstitions, uh, and you you yourself may do some superstitious behavior. And I'm going to give you this example. Yeah. Say you're watching TV, right? And you pick up your remote control and you go to change the channel. And the remote control's not working. And so you smack the controller on your thigh or on your palm of your hand. And you press the change channel button and it works. And you go, okay. Like maybe there's a loose battery or a loose connection or something. So you do that. Next time you go to change the channel, you go to change the channel and it doesn't work. And so 
and you go, oh yeah, and you smack your palm or you smack it on your thigh or, and you press it and it goes. Third time you pick it up, you'll pick up the remote control, you'll bang it on your thigh or your palm of your hand, and you'll change the channel. And it could be a different remote control. And you have, you have that remote control has trained you into a superstitious behavior. And so this kind of thing, him going in and out of the stall like this, or racing through the stall, is he banged his knee once or twice. And so he races through to get past that, that point, even if there's nothing going on. And if he c continues to do that, he'll never learn that there's nothing to worry about. He'll always be worried about it because he'll be avoiding it. You know, each time he races in, in his mind, every time he scoots by, he goes, oh, I got by, got by that, and it didn't bite me in the knee. Uh, and it's kind of a funny sort of thing, but it's true. It's how they, how they, how they think. And uh, so, see, Eric is clucking there, making that noise. And okay, see this right here. I'm gonna switch. See how he stepped into space, and he was bumping him in the shin with his with his foot. <clears throat> and you saw you saw Merlin was kind of throwing his foot down kind of fast. Colts in particular um, don't like you messing with their front legs like that. And I think it goes back to their mock play and fighting. One of the things they'll do is they'll they'll bite each other right along here, and and. And then they buckle their knee and they go down, and then the the, the horse that bit them goes on top and tries to, you know, like bite them on top and wrestle them that way. And so that, like, touching them like that can trigger that, like where they they. I, I was doing that the other day when I was doing one of the videos out in the field with the little little colt, and I touched him there. Oh, see, he went in really good. I touched him there, and he got he got kind of studly, and then started to try to mock, bite, and play with me, fight me. And I kind of, I kind of, in his mind, kind of told him like, okay, see, we're gonna play, we're gonna, we're gonna roughhouse. So I'm not saying you don't do it. I'm just saying just be conscious that sometimes when you do it with colts and male horses or stallions, you'll get a fast reaction, like where they're stomped their leg down something like that and um, see so he got him to go in there nice and easy and come out nice and easy see, he's getting it and this kind of stuff will have a ripple effect in all his training look at that that was good good job and don't get greedy right <laughs> A lot of times you think, okay, what, you did that really good. Let's do one more, or two more, or three more. And uh, you're best to quit on a good note. So he's taking his halter off him here. And see, this is what, another thing we do with like, like Eric will plant his feet here, you know, and the horses come up to him. And when he's letting, un, unhaltering them and everything, you know, if you don't have to chase your horse, make your horse come to you. Thanks for watching.